Y'all already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life, and we're back. Gang banging in prison. Joining a gang. Getting out of a gang. How it happens, how it goes down, what I've personally seen. A lot of people, all not a lot of people, assume that because I wear bulls hats. Phillies hats, I wear red a lot, that I'm in some sort of a gang. I'm not. If I was, someone on here by now would have been like, Jay, you know you with us, why you ain't claiming us. I never got down. And there's a lot of reasons for why I never got down. It wasn't that I didn't have the opportunities. It wasn't that opportunities didn't show right up to me like, hey, you need to roll with us was because I chose not to. Today, I'm going to get into why I chose not to. What I've seen going on amongst the gangs, how I've seen guys get in gangs, why I've seen guys get in gangs, and some of the ways I've seen guys get out. For me, it wasn't my thing. Before we start this video, let me make it very clear. This video is not meant to bash or go at anybody that is gang related to each their own. Everybody does what they do for their own reasons. I got no problem with no sets, nor am I here to put anybody or their set down. That is your life. Live it how you want. And I'm going to live mine the way I see fit. It is bright as you can see. The sun is doing its job today. Shout out to DGK Clothing. They killed it with the shirt. But yeah, we're going to get into gang banging in prison. Getting in, getting out, and why I never got down. I know I done seen it. You know I done lived it. So, let's relive it. Damn, they whooping his ass. So y'all saw that. He was messing old boy up. But it has nothing to do with why I never joined the gang. I've been jumped. God knows how many times. And I wasn't part of a gang when it was over. It was just, I had a disagreement. They didn't fight one-on-one. -on -one, decided they was going to jump me. And that's what happened. It's also what's going to happen when you decide to link up. When you decide to come home. When you decide to jo join, you know, whatever organization has approached you. Whatever organization you've approached. Whatever organization you live around. Whatever you decide, that's going to be part of it. Part of my problem, and I'm not speaking for everybody. Part of my problem, one of my biggest problems with the gang activity I saw was pause. Red Bull. I've seen a lot of gang members get hurt. And sadly and truly enough, when they would get hurt, it would almost always be at the hands of their own gang. Unless they had some beef going on with another gang, something of that sort. It was almost always their gang hurting them. I've seen gang members do things they shouldn't do and get violated beyond what y'all just seen in that small video clip. I've seen dudes get X'd all the way out to where they have to live in the hole. They check in. It means they go to the guards, hey. I fear for my life. I can't be in general population. We're not putting you in the hole. Well, I'm not going back in the cell. Well, then you're going to the hole. Winner. They go to the hole. Come back to them in 30 days. Hey, releasing you from the hole. I'm refusing. They end up living the rest of their existence, their, their penitentiary bid, inside of a tiny cell all by themselves. Because they now can no longer go back in the general population. I'd say I first came in contact with gang members in the gang life at around 13 years old. And it was these Asian dudes out where I lived at. Primarily Cambodian dudes. And they had a set out there called UAB. United Asian Bloods. These dudes were deep. I ran with these dudes all day. Kicked it with these dudes, skipped school with these dudes. But I started to notice something real quick. I've watched them jump other Asian dudes in. They all knew gang signs and stuff. 
but they really weren't about anything. These were 13, 14, 15 year olds being led by 16 and 17 year olds. So it became pretty obvious to me real fast that what they were banging and what they were claiming wasn't real. In 93, here in VA, you heard, you know, dudes say they were in gangs. You've seen the gang drawings and the spray paint on buildings. But there wasn't really no straight gang neighborhoods. We had another set of, of, of bloods out here, Southside Bloods, that was all white dudes. Which later on, everybody come to realize that's just something they made up. Moving forward, my real, real introduction to the games, you know, the gangs would be when I started getting locked up. When I started hitting the jails, not the detention center so much. You had a handful of little dudes that claimed that they were gang members. But in reality, they were just playing follow the leader type stuff. Like if you pick them up and drop them off on Grape Street out in Cali or, you know, on one of them blood blocks out there. They'd be a YouTube sensation real quick. There'd be videos all over the internet about them because they were just claiming it because somebody else did. My time in Philly back in the 90s when I first started doing time in Philly, I see no gangs. I talked to my homeboys today and I'm not going to say they're not active in Philly. But dudes I talk to to this day are like, nah, I ain't seen no bloods in Philly. I ain't seen no crips in Philly. This Philly, man. You know how we, you know how we do. We, we represent the 215. This Philly out here. We represent where we're from, you know, whether it's north, south, southwest, west, whatever, northeast, whatever. They repping, that's how they're repping out there. Like I said, there could be gangs by now. I'm not active in the streets of Philly. As you can see, today the house I'm working on is in the boondocks, the twigs, the sticks. See all them damn trees? Pretty sure some horses on the other side of the trees over there, too. Just this morning, we were down hillside, and they found a body on the corner. So we went from being in the projects that this morning to out here. But anyways, I didn't see that in Philly. I started doing time in Virginia, and the gangs are active. The jail was flooded with them. They were on some, you're going to get down or you're going to lay down. And like Siegel said, and when you lay down, you stay down. That's how they were doing it in the jail. These dudes' numbers had grown so much, and the Bloods being the largest gang in there, that it was, it was almost at times you would hear the, the shoes scuffling two, three times a day from new dudes being initiated. New guys, just like that guy y'all saw in the beginning, in the cell fighting three guys. They were crip. They'd be in the cell fighting however many guys. All these different gangs were in the jail. Like the gangs legitly took over the jail. If you were not in a gang, you stood out. You were an easy target unless you had shown people time and time again that no matter what, I'm going to fight, win, lose, or draw, I'm going to continue to fight. Unless you were a snitch and they even beat them up at times. Or you were just a cool dude, man. Huh? You didn't always have to be a dude that could fight. You could just be somebody that dude just like, man, dude's cool as a bitch, man. I rock with the white dude, man. Nah, ain't nobody doing nothing to him. Dude's cool. Like the dude, uh, Nate, I think his name is, from 60 Days In, that killed himself. Rest in peace to dude. If y'all watch that show, y'all seen the, all the gang members in there. Nate never had no problems, but the other dudes was scary as hell. You hear the interviews, and, oh, man, these gang members, these gang members. They rock with Nate. He was a cool dude. I've seen that happen. I've had it happen with me. I didn't always have to fight. Dudes knew I, dudes all right, man, you know what I mean? Ain't no point running down on him or doing nothing. Plus, he's going to fight with us. They're always going to go with where they go, you know, get least resistance. Started raining, so I had to change clothes. But let's get back into the purpose of what we were talking about. Once you become a gang member, gang affiliated, all the friends you had, the guys you kicked it with on a day-to-day -day basis, can no longer kick it with you. The way they used to, unless they're gang affiliated. I had a lot of dudes that I wouldn't say were friends, but dudes that I got close to over time that were going to join gangs. Whether it be they become Crip, Blood, GD, MS-13, whatever, you know, the gang may be. Those being the main ones here in Virginia. When they would become gang affiliated, our kick it would slowly 
fade away. It would disintegrate. Here's the thing about it. Being locked up, you're going to find yourself in enough trouble as it is. You're going to find yourself at times in situations that are unavoidable. There are a lot of crazy guys, mentally unstable guys, bullies, guys that are just looking to start trouble for whatever reason. And when it comes knocking, you're going to have to deal with it. That's one thing. Once you become gang affiliated, you don't really have to worry about that random guy so much, even though there are some crazy people that are going to jump out there and try you not caring who you got standing behind you. It's not as common. With a guy like me, if I got a beef with somebody and they're not gang related, they're not no gang, me and him can handle our business. And once it's over, it's over. Once we fight, win, lose, or draw, it's a dead deal. It's done. Now, if I'm gang-related or he's gang-related, there's no chance that me and him are just going to fight. Very seldom does it happen. What's going to happen is the moment that me and him get to arguing, his homeboys are going to come at me, and they're all going to come at me, and they're going to dishrag me. They're going to beat me down, stomp me, stab me, fight me, whatever they got to do. They're going to do it to show everybody else, y'all don't disrespect us. You don't lost your damn mind thinking he's about to carry one of ours. So white dude, I do not remember this dude's name. We only kicked it for a short period of time, and it was towards the beginning of my bid. But he was a cool white dude, man. Street dude, solid dude. Wasn't nothing funny about him, you know what I mean? He held his own. We meal, work out, talk. This only happened for maybe a month and a half. Then he starts telling me, he says, hey, he's got a homeboy named Spank. He said, Spank and, uh, you know, they talking about I can become GD. You should get down. Now, they've already asked about you. I told them about you. They know who you are. I said, nah, man, I'm good. He's like, you sure? I said, yeah, I'm, I'm good, man. I'm not trying to be no gang member. He was like, all right. Thought on it. Got back with him. I said, nah, man. I'm not going to do that. And I wish you wouldn't do that. You seem like good people, man. Like, you know, once you join up, man, you can't really kick it no more like that. Man, you my homeboy. What you talking about? I said, all right, man, whatever. Sure enough, man, I, I'd say better part of maybe not even two, three days has passed. Probably two days. He tells me, yeah, I'm going to go up there. We're going to run the fade and, and I'm going to get down. I said, whatever, that's that's on you, man. He came by myself was talking to me. He goes up there. I don't even go out in the pod to watch, to listen. And like I've said, whenever somebody gets to fighting, you can hear the thumps from the fists, the feet, you know, the sounds of sneakers skirting off of the skirt, 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 off the concrete in the cell. You can hear the bodies hitting the wall, hitting the doors, punches, groaning, moaning, you know, grunts. I hear him up there and he's going through it. He's up there rumbling these doors. A little bit later that evening, he comes back by the cell like, what's up with you? All knotted up. Most of the stuff he took was to his body. He run with the dudes. Now he's GD. That would be one of the select few last conversations me and him had. Now I went from me and him kicking it to anytime you see him, anybody that's with him is part of the same gang that he is. Anybody around him is GD. With being the new guy, and I don't know if this flies everywhere, but I've seen it here timeless, you know, countless times. With being a new guy, you still got something to prove. They get another guy in there that's false flagging. False flagging means he's claiming GD, but he's really not GD. He done got away with this somewhere else, but he's done got here now where these dudes really are about that life. They know their knowledge. They're real gang members. Like, if you're fake, it's going to be exposed. Dude ain't no slouch. So I don't understand why he was claiming to be something he wasn't. Like, this wasn't no small dude. Probably in his late 20s. Looked like a street dude. Carried himself like a street dude. Um, you can take one look at him and be like, yeah, the boy can most likely fight. Looks like he can fight. He various scars here and there. Got them rough old man, old man knuckles, them old Clint Eastwood fish, right? So dude is out there in the yard, and there's a whole bunch of them standing out there. All these GD dudes are standing out there. And tell, he's telling them, look, man, I don't know what y'all talking about. Like, 
He's spitting his knowledge. And his knowledge being something that only other gang members would know. It's a way of them validating what you're saying to be true. Dude is arguing with him. He's fighting his case. I didn't even sign up for this in Virginia. I was in another state doing time when I became GD. So just because y'all shit ain't right, don't mean my shit ain't right. It just means y'all's wrong. Ain't nobody trying to hear that. So they go talk to the main dude later that evening. And we have night wreck at this point. Night wreck, you get to go outside from around 6.15. Usually you come back in around 8, 8.30, 8.45 at the latest. They go holler at the main dude. It's just a whole bunch of average everyday gang members that's surrounded this dude questioning about the stuff he's saying, his affiliations and this and that. And the main dude tells him, nah, he's not GD. Y'all don't have to come to me with this, you know. Y'all supposed to, but nah, go ahead and handle him. We go out to Night Wreck that night. And I told you, when you're the new guy, they send these new guys through more than the guys of the seasons, more than the vets. If you've been down a long time, a lot of times you get the option of if you want to jump in there, it's not. You got more say so, you got more rank. But with the new guys, they're like more or less like the foot soldiers. So dude that I kick it with, he's on the front line. They tell him, nah, this ain't no violation. This ain't nothing like that. Y'all just going to run up on him and just punish him, man. Just beat the shit out the man. Run down on him, mess him up, stomp him out. Doing real dirty for everybody to see. I can look at this dude and tell he could probably take on two or three of these these little dudes if, if with no problem, right? So this dude's walking the track. Got another black dude he's walking with. And they're just walking and talking. And he knows. I'm, it's, it's obvious from the way the conversation ended early and the energy that was in the air that this is going to end bad for him. He's walking. But as he's walking, he keeps his eyes on them. And they approach him. My homeboy runs up first, swings on him. Connects, hits him in the side of his face. Dude backs up. Dude put his hands up. Everybody watching. I think they had the same thought in their head that I did. Just in the way he cocked back. And the way he positioned himself. Put his one hand up, protect his face. Put his other hand out. That way he could fight. You could tell dude knew, you know, he knew how to fight. My homeboy ran up again. Dude hit him one time. You ever heard those, those home run knockout the park? In baseball, that crack it makes when the bat hits the baseball, and you see the ball fly. That's what it sounded like when he hit dude in the mouth. Dude come running up and he just turned around, and put his you know guard up, turn around, boom, hit him. And when he hit him, he broke all this shit. White dude backed up, grabbed his face. Other dudes run up on him. This dude is handling these dudes, beating their asses out there, embarrassing them. To the point that eventually all of them just rushed him. When I say all of them, talking a good 10, 15 people in this clique just ran up. They overpowered him, got him on the ground, started punching him, stomping him, kicking him. They beat the shit out of him. Meanwhile, dude that I know that got rocked has just walked off now. And he's holding his face while everybody's over there fighting. He's, ah, uh, ah, uh, I can only imagine how bad that shit right there hurt. I've had it happen, but not to the extent of what he had happen. He's walking around, ah, ah, holding his face. The tower sees it. Y'all know what happens. The guards come out, dudes disperse. Dudes laying on the ground, mangled, all beat the shit up. Meanwhile, the dude I used to kick it with, this dude ain't been a gang member now, not even a solid week, and this whole shit is just crushed. He's walking, and the guards are trying to ask him what happened because he's holding his face, and he's clear as day something's wrong with it. Just from the noises he's making, he can't just contain it like, just hold it like, hey, ain't nothing happening. Just punch me. His shit's broke. He's attempting to tell the guards that he's okay. But with his jaw being broke, it just hangs. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? On some, some, some Peter Griffin family guy shit. His shit is just done. He, he can't talk, right? He ends up going to the infirmary. He tells them he don't know what happened. At this point, he's not on the STG list, which is security threat group. That's how they classify the gang members. They don't know he's a gang member. He tells them, I don't know what happened, man. I walked through the middle of something and got hit. Dude was just, I don't know who was fighting, who, who, what it was. I was just there and somebody hit me. I don't know who hit me. He goes to the infirmary. Comes back from the infirmary. He's got the wires all throughout his mouth. When your jaw gets broke, they wire your mouth shut so that your jaw can reheal. He's got wires all through his mouth where they don't wire his jaw shut. And everything he eats from this point on, 
He's got to eat out of a straw. It gets worse. Dude don't tell on nobody. Dude don't tell the guards who jumped him, what happened. They take the dude, they put him in the hole under investigation. They grab a couple of the little gang members up that they could, you know, they could pick out of everybody else. The one dude that dumbass tattoos all over his face. He's easy to spot. You can't hide. Hey, you dummy with all the tattoos on his face. Come here. They lock a bunch of these dudes up. When I mean a bunch, three or four out of maybe the 10, 15 that was there. They lock the dude up that was laying on the ground after he gets out, you know, the infirmary. He goes over to the hole in the investigation. Nothing happens of it. They let them all back on the yard. They all come back to the same building, different pods, different cells, but they're all back in the same building. Old boy that's got his jaw broke is still talking shit. He's telling the other dudes, he caught me. Like, had he not caught me, man, I probably could have beat dude one-on-one. -on -one. Like, if me and dude would have, you know what I mean, went head up, and they're like, you did go head up. You ran up a stole on him, dude turned around and broke your shit. What is you talking about? You was the one that wanted to run up and, and be the first one. Part of the reasons I don't join no damn gangs. So he's steadily running his mouth, right? The dude that broke his jaw is back in the same pod, walking around him every single day, looking at him like, yeah, I broke your shit. So he's sitting out at the benches with some other GD dudes telling them, you know what I mean, once my shit heals up, I'm going to have to see where dude's at. I can't walk around like this. Even though y'all got at him, I'm going to, you know what I mean, when my jaw heals up. And all I can think is, don't do this. Leave this dude alone. You already seen dude can fight. Like, he was messing y'all up. It took all of y'all to take this man on. And I don't, me personally, I understand why it happens. But I'm more of a one-on-one, -on -one, up close and personal. If you beat me, kudos to you. Salute. Hey, you got me. I'm not big on that jumping people. That was young boy shit we did when we was young. Dude is sitting out at the benches with his homeboys and mother GD dude is telling them, nah, man, like talking outside of his mouth when my shit heals up. I'm telling you, me and dude going to have to run it back, run it back, run it back. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. Won't leave it alone. Anybody that walks by can hear it. Dude goes over to the dude that broke his jaw when these dudes walking by and says, hey, white dude said that, you know, you better watch your back. Dudes like to add little things. He makes it seem like this white dude's about to do something to him. Like, he might stab him. Like, he's going to attack him at any moment. Said, yeah, he ain't going to walk around here with his shit all broke like this. Like, he's going to get at you. Later that evening, we all go to chow. This dude's not going to chow because he's eating a special diet. They're bringing him liquids that he's got to eat. He's got to eat soup. He's eating, uh, what's that shit? It's, like, it's almost like grits, but it's sweet. They're bringing him different things for meals, so he's not going to chow. I go to chow. I see the big ass black dude that broke his shit. They ain't going to chow. Think nothing of it. A bunch of dudes ain't going to chow. This ain't really a good trace. There's a whole bunch of different dudes that didn't go. We're in the chow hall, and I see one of the guards run out the chow hall. And when something happens in the building, they'll lock us in the chow hall. If there's no guard in there, and they'll run back over to wherever is going on. They lock us in the chow hall and run off to the building. I'm still in line. I ain't even got my tray yet. So I walk over to the door, look out the glass. There's these bars and this thick plexiglass. I'm looking, and there's a bunch of officers running to the building. Continue looking. Three, four minutes later, they bring that big dude out in handcuffs. He's all cuffed up. They're walking him out the front door, taking him to the hole. I see the nurses and them running as well, crossing right, right across the grass, headed to the building. A couple more COs. I see them bring dude out. And they'll push this damn stretcher in there. When I'm garnished, you lift up on the wheels. I see them push that over there. Cut down the boulevard. Up into our building. Up to the 7 building. Over the 100 pod. And I see them come out. And they got the dude that I told not to join the gang. Laying on the stretcher. Knocked all the way out. All the way unconscious. Dude beat his ass. Rebroke all this shit. Busted his face all up. And just made an example out of him. I don't know what happened to the dude afterwards. I never seen him again. I'm going to assume that either DOC press charges on him, maybe do press charges on him because I never seen him again, or he just went to another prison. But they didn't get a chance to jump old boy the second time. Dude that, that ran up on him and got his shit broke that I thought was my homeboy, he didn't get a chance to sneak dude this time. He didn't have all of his homeboys with him this time this time all of his homeboys went to chow and he fell back why would i sign up for something like that we did end up on lockdown that night 
After dude got smashed out by the big dude, they questioned around why the big dude attacking, why this happened. And I told y'all, it's a novella that's Spanish for like soap opera. Like prison's like a big soap opera. It's like a big college campus. Everybody knows everybody. Somebody said, hey, dude told dude that white dude was going to attack him. They ended up attacking that man, running up in his cell, hurting him, messing him all up. Another one of those violent situations. Blood once again. Officers back in the building again. Medical in the building once again. We went on lock. They realized if we got something going on between the gangs, something's brewing. It's the same gang members. It's the same gang that is getting into it with people back to back. Let's find out what's going on. Let's lock everybody down. Yeah, Williams lock his ass down too, even though he ain't got nothing to do with it. Yeah, him lock, lock everybody down. Go through the cells, start looking for gang literature. Find out. Strip them down naked. Look at all the tattoos. Make them squat and cough and show you their chocolate starfish. Bend over, let me see it. That's what we had to go through because of what the gangs had going on. Back to raining again. But with this story, with this topic, with everything I got to say, it's way too much to just put into today's video. So we're going to do part two tomorrow. Drop a Thursday video for y'all. Happy hump day to everybody. Tomorrow I'm going to tell you something about this MS-13 stuff. I'm going to let you know what it's like watching somebody get up out of that game. With the dude in today's story that that broke old boy's jaw. Who's to say if he was real or not? Who's to say if he really was in another state and became GD and that it was legit and that the VA dudes just didn't have the same knowledge that he did or somewhere along the line, the, you know, lines got blurred, things got mixed up. He went out like a soldier. He had the last laugh. But in the story I'm going to tell you all tomorrow with this MS-13 situation, it's not nothing to laugh about. This is a gang that once you've been denounced, once they no longer want no parts of you, once they've decided you're not representing them right or you can't be with them or you tricked them, getting out of that gang is going to be a whole lot worse than anything y'all see on TV. A whole lot worse than that little clip in the beginning with dude getting beat up. Y'all stay tuned for tomorrow's video. It's going to be a banger. Got to get out of here. Got to get back to work. But anyways, these jails, institutions, detention centers, these prisons, they're all just crazy world outside of this already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. Just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life. And to all my real ones. And there are some real ones watching. Because y'all still watching me. Y'all know how we do, man. Salute.